Hey friend, Hector here from strongesttech.com and this week's technique of the week. Today I'm going to be uh, giving you a little insight on something that I've been playing around with uh, with my deadlifting. So um, we're currently right in the middle, actually we just started, we're about week two into a new deadlift series uh, that uh, we're kind of testing out. So I've got a whole bunch of people uh, testing out this series and I've been playing with this and it's actually been giving me some pretty good... Um, some pretty good returns, I guess, on, on getting my deadlift uh, bigger. So, as you already know, I'm not a big uh, proponent of assistance exercises, uh, straps, wraps, using a belt, that kind of stuff. None, has nothing to do with ego. I just believe that you can build a really strong deadlift without any of those um, accessory things. So, I do do some specialized variety stuff, like what I'm going to show you today and how you can improve uh, the lockout and how you can just basically get stronger um, with the deadlift. So with the BJJ background, we believe jiu-jitsu breaks down into two things, posture and positioning, okay? If you can get stronger in your posture, you'll be in a better position to get the most leverage out of your opponent. Okay, and I basically apply those same exact principles to my deadlifting. So if I can get stronger in my posture, I'll improve my position, giving me more leverage over the bar. All right. So I'm going to show you a little technique that I've been playing around with for the last, probably like the last six months, and it's really been working out really well for me. So a very common um, assistance exercise is for people to do um, rack pulls, right? So they'll get the they'll get the the bar loaded up on like in a squat rack, and they'll kind of pull it uh, from they'll pull it from their knees to the lockout. Okay, great exercise. Uh, but many other uh, high level deadlifters that I've talked to say that there's no carryover. That that it's since you're not actually pulling the weight from the floor, that it really doesn't transfer over to actually helping the deadlift. So many, I'm sure, will, will argue back and forth that it does or that it doesn't. Um, but I agree with them and I agree that you should actually pull the weight from the floor. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do a modified variation of the rack pull. And so this would this is something that I would typically warm up with here. This is uh, 120 kilos. So you set up like you normally would for your deadlift, okay? And what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna do about a set of five. And every repetition, and you wanna do this with lighter weights, so you're not trying to go, so that's one of the things that makes this different from like a rack pull, is that a rack pull is you'll load up way more weight than you could traditionally deadlift because the weight is already, you know, almost half, more than half the way up, right? It's like three quarters of the way up. So, from here, we're going to be using lighter weights because I'm actually going to pull the weight from the ground, but also I'm going to pause. So usually the sticking point is right about knee level, right? Whether it's a, a conventional uh, pull or if it's a sumo pull, usually the sticking point will be right about here at the knees. So that's where we're going to pause and that's where we're going to get stronger and work our pulls from there, but we gotta pull the weight from the floor. So I'm gonna demo what it's gonna look like. So you get in the position, uh, whatever style it is that you, that you choose to pull with, doesn't really matter, okay? I set my grips, okay? Now, as soon as I initiate my pull, I'm gonna pause right about knee level. I pause here, keep my chest up, stay tight, and then finish with my hips. Again, pause, finish with the hips. Pause, finish with the hips. I think that was three, I got two more. Pause, finish with the hips. Last one. Finish with the hips. So I'll work that all the way up till I get to about 60, 70% and I'll use those weights kind of as I'm warming up. And then once I get to my main training weight for the day, I just go straight to pull. So that's really gonna help 
uh, speed up the lockout of your deadlift because traditionally this is where you would slow down and then you may start to use the back to try to finish and get your hips through. So give that a try. As soon as you get to the knees, again, you want to use lighter weights because you're going to be holding that weight at knee level for about like a one to a two count, long enough to kill any momentum of that bell, um, not bell, of the bar rising up. So the moment you get up to the knees, pause for a second, and then don't use your back to finish quickly wedge and drive your hips into the bar. So once you get here, bang, as soon as you get to the knees, drive your hips straight ahead. So I'm gonna turn the bar sideways so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Okay, my setup stays the same. Pull, once I get to knee level, pause, drive your hips through. And you saw how my hips just shot forward really quick. So, give that a try. Let me know how it goes. That's this week's technique of the week. If you have any comments, you have any questions, leave it in the comment section below. Also, if you're interested in joining our current case study of this new deadlift series, I left some information in the uh, description below. We've already started, so you may be a few weeks behind us, but you're more than welcome to jump in and uh, test out some pretty cool deadlifting plans that uh, we're going to be releasing here from the Strong Tech blog. So that's all I got for you guys today. Again, I'm Hector with StrongTech.com and this week's Technique of the Week.